Hey guys, I hope you had fun going through what's that thing. I hope you have some good answers. Uh, I'll be looking at them shortly. Let's get into the answers so you can find out if you are a good guesser. Here we go. Remember that these things were things that were important to the ancient Romans. Um, and it tells us something about their life and, and what was important and going on in the world at that time. Imagine people, you know, hundreds of years from now looking at the things that were important to us in 2020. Isn't it going to be the absolute craziest thing in the whole world? Like 2020 has just been absolutely ridiculous. So, yeah, let's find out what was going on in their lives back in ancient times in ancient Rome. So the first thing, thing number one, is this crazy looking thing. And hopefully you're a good guesser. Hopefully you looked at that and figured it out right away. That was um, a loaf of ancient bread or like um, an ancient cake. So it was put into a mold that made that kind of cool looking design on it. And what happened to this bread was um, the Mount Vesuvius had erupted. So maybe you've heard of that before. Maybe you've heard of the city Pompeii. They had this huge volcano on the edge of Pompeii, this little city. Um, and they didn't know that it was a volcano. They thought that it was a mountain. And so the, the volcano was like making these gurgling and rumbling sounds. And they would say things like, oh, the, you know, gods are upset. The mountain is rumbling. They had no idea that it was a volcano. So when it erupted, imagine their shock and surprise. Um, but what happened was it wasn't so much the lava that actually killed people, but it was the dust and the ash and the smoke that came out from it. And it petrified things. It, almost immediately, it petrified people and animals and um, things like this loaf of bread. That's why it still holds this shape. It was it essentially didn't burn. It was um, petrified. I'll show you some more stuff as we move into uh, this chapter on Rome, and you'll get to learn a little bit more about Pompeii and Mount Vesuvius and what happened when that eruption occurred. All right, thing number two I bet a lot of you got this one right. This is just a set of um, silver plates and cups. They're just dishes, right? All right, thing number three. Oh, this thing. I hear some of the best guesses for this. But you guys are going to be so disappointed. So it's not a frying pan. I told you that yesterday. It's an appetizer serving tray. Here's something you have to know about ancient Romans. They loved socializing. Like 2020 would be their worst nightmare. This coronavirus thing would just like, oh, they wouldn't have been able to stand it. They loved socializing. They loved having parties. They loved getting together. It was very important to them to dress up and be looking fancy and have their nicest clothes and togas on and having um, for the girls like pretty jewelry and headbands. And they just really enjoyed being together and having parties regularly. And so having these serving trays were an important thing. Um, you know, load them up with drinks or food and snacks and things like that. And servers would walk through the party and serve people. Thing number four. Four. All right, I think that a lot of you might have figured out what this thing is, although I didn't tell you the size, but what these are is dice, and it's like I have a dice thing in every single what's that thing. I swear that I do, but anyway, um, so this is a special kind of dice. They're called loaded dice. They're cheater's dice. So you pop this cap off right here, and then you take some, you know, piece of metal or a rock or something like that, and you wedge it in there really tight. You can kind of see like a little scuff mark right here. So you wedge that in there, and then you put the cap back on top of it. Remember back in ancient times, this would have looked, you know, perfect. But anyway, it looks kind of like warped and stuff now. But back then it would have been perfect. And when you throw the dice out, that weight, that you've wedged inside there causes it to want to land on the same side every time. So you would say, I'm going to throw threes. You've already loaded the dice, their cheater's dice, so that you know that they're going to keep landing on threes and you're going to be the big winner that day, but you were really a cheater. All right. Thing number five. Thing number five. This one's kind of a tricky one. Some students, it kind of goes back and forth. Like some students have gotten this right away and a, a lot of students had a lot of really interesting guesses on this one. So this is an oil wick lamp, like those lamps that, you know, you may have seen in a cartoon or something. You rub the side of it and a genie comes out. 
Um, this you fill with oil. If you've been to Cracker Barrel, they have oil with lamps on all of their tables. You fill the jar, the, the basin part, this part, you would fill with liquid oil. And then a wick would come out right here and you would light it on fire. And, the, you know, they didn't have any electricity or anything, so, but they needed nighttime light. So this is what they would use. It looks kind of like this little guy here. Thing number six, I'm sure that everybody got this one right. It's a comb. It's a hair comb. Isn't it crazy? Because it is carved from wood. So can you imagine how long it took to make this without accidentally breaking one of these little teeth off? It's, it blows my mind. But anyway, they had wooden combs. So um, I think they'd be really hard on your head. But I don't know. Anyway, good thing that we live in modern times. All right, thing number seven. So this thing, I have to tell you guys, I sat last night with my son and made him do this, what's that thing? And I'm I'm not sure. I think he was joking. I wish I would have been recording it because you guys would have just died. When I showed him this and said, what's that thing? His first guess was a satellite dish. Now, I'm a history teacher, and my son guessed an ancient satellite dish. I could have died. Well, anyway, I hope you didn't guess a satellite dish. Uh, so this thing I told you yesterday wouldn't have had any of this corrosion stuff on it. It would have been really, really shiny. Back in ancient times, they did not have mirrors, and they were so focused on physical appearance being uh, handsome or being pretty was really important to them. Something that I did not tell you guys was in ancient Greece when they did the Olympics. All right, I'm glad we're not in class because if we were in class, you'd all be like totally embarrassed. So I'm going to tell you this now in the comfort of your own home. In ancient Greece, they invented the Olympics. And when they did the Olympics, they played them entirely naked. No clothes whatsoever. And the reason that they did that was because they were so proud of their muscle. They were so proud of how hard they had worked to have such muscular lean bodies that they felt the only way they could you could really see the movement of muscle was to be in your birthday suit for the Olympics. So again, so happy that we live in modern times and, and we don't do that <laughs> anymore. Um, so this idea back in ancient times between ancient Rome and ancient Greece was this obsession, almost obsession with physical appearance and having good bodies and being able to look at yourself. Oh my gosh, they would love selfies so much. If, if this was a thing back then, they would love selfies. Um, but they were fascinated with the human body. And I have to say, during this time, something else that they, you know, they took it a step further. It wasn't just looking at themselves, but it was also um, studying the human body when it came to science and medicine and learning about how to heal the body. So I think they would be fascinated by what's going on right now. I also want to add, before I forget, that in ancient times, women were not allowed to go to the Olympics. The only ones that could participate and could go and view the Olympics was men because of this, you know, weird, I don't know, this weird thing that they did. So anyway, this is a reflection disc. They shined it up. It had this high, high polish on it, and they would look at themselves kind of like we use a mirror. Um, think about on maybe like the side of the, a car. When you stand there and you look at yourself and you can see your reflection, that's kind of what they got out of this thing. They didn't know what a mirror is. They didn't know what they were missing out on having like a real mirror where you could really see, see yourself. So they were happy with what this actually accomplished. All right, that was a lot of strange information. <laughs> Aren't you glad you're not sitting by your peers right now? Okay, um, so I told you yesterday that this thing is a ring. And I told you that it had a specific purpose. Um, it could be used to complete a task. And the task is, it's an archery ring. So you would put it on this part of your finger. You wouldn't slide it all the way down. You would put it up between your first and second knuckle. And then you would use it to pluck the string on a bow and arrow and pull it back. So it kind of helped your finger so that you didn't hurt your finger so much. Why is this important? Because war, right? 
in ancient times, they're all trying to grow these empires. They're trying to expand their territory. They're fighting. There is war, a lot of war in ancient times. And, you know, they didn't have guns. There was no such thing as explosives yet. So they're still fighting with swords and bow and arrow and archery and that kind of thing. We'll talk more about that when we get into the chapter two. Okay, these things... Um, these things, I know a lot of you probably were going to guess that it's a gear. It is not a gear. It's actually much worse thing than a gear. So this was a torture device. I know that some of you probably were going to guess that too. I've seen a lot of students guess that over the years. Um, they're called flagellum. They are punishment tools. Uh, so you, what they used them for was they would take a whip, you know, a long whip with the handle and then the long leather strap that came off of it. And on the end of the leather strap, they would tie these flagellum on there so that when they would hit somebody with the whip, you know, they used, they had slavery and they did a lot of terrible things in Rome. Um, when they whipped people, they would get them not just with the leather strap, but with this metal flagellum tool. Um, most historians agree that when they were performing crucifixions, Rome, that was their thing, right? So, uh, you know, we're we're going to be talking about the rise of Christianity that's going to be coming in our lessons as a part of our religion for this section of the um, this chapter, I guess I should say. Um, so we'll talk about rise of Christianity. But one of the things that was done was Rome performed a lot of crucifixions. Rome was the city state that um, or the civilization that crucified Jesus. Most historians agree that something like this was probably used in his crucifixion. We'll talk about it further uh, down the road in this chapter. Okay, this thing. So tons of them have been recovered in Rome. What I have to tell you guys, it's called a dodecahedra based on the um, number of sides that it has. No one knows what these things are for. So a lot of historians have had these. They've had them in their hands. They've tried to figure it out. They've put together other artifacts that have been recovered. And they have never discovered exactly what it was used for. But we have two guesses that most historians have agreed are probably the answer. They just can't figure out which one it is. So one guess is that this was used like a... Um, lamp post lantern kind of thing so you would set a candle inside here all right and then you would stick your hand in through one of these holes to light it or to put it out um so that's one guess but the other guess that most historians agree is probably the accurate guess is that this was used as a farming tool and you would take this dodecahedra you or your kids whoever was helping you would roll it along the ground on your field where you were going to do planting that you would just keep rolling it and that these little spiky peg things that stuck out they're perfectly distanced apart so um every you know three inches there would be a, a divot a little indentation into the ground remember that this comes in different sizes like from the size of a softball up to like the size of a soccer ball and so um, you would get a different distance based on the size of the dodecahedra that you would use. So as you had rolled it down this row in through your field, it would leave all these little indentations, you know, like every three inches apart or whatever. And you would drop a seed into the indentation and then you would cover it with dirt. And they thought that they used this as a planting device. Now, we're not entirely 100% sure that that's actually accurate. We have no um, solid proof that that's absolutely what it is. That is just historians' best guess at what it is. So, you know, if you guys want to become rich or something like that, you could probably investigate this more and find out what the real scoop is or if they're actually right, find some evidence and proof to prove it to be true or not true. So I hope you guys have fun with this. What's that thing? We are going to um, move on into the chapter. and We're going to be starting a novel, too. I told you guys about the novel. We're going to start getting into that real soon. In fact, probably later this week, um, I'll be doing the first reading with you guys. I hope you like it a lot. Uh, I'll be posting more stuff in um, Canvas quizzes for you guys when it comes to the novel. But for today, there is no homework, you guys. This was all about fun. So I hope you're all doing well. Miss you guys. Hope that we get back this year. Take care. And if you need anything, please reach out to me, swolf2 at district100.com. Have a good one, guys. See ya.